and today we're going to do a beginner's guide to Substance Painter. Today's video we're going to talk about navigating the user interface. All right, so before we begin, I want to talk about, I want to bring a model into the scene because that's going to be one of the big things. A lot of what I see is navigating the UI without actually affecting a model or showing how to bring a model in. So the first thing I'd like to do is bring in a model. So if you go up to file, go to new, you'll get your new project. You can go up here to your template which will allow you to choose which template you want to go. Do you want to go PBR, non-PBR, specular, metal, PBR with specular? So for this purposes, I'm going to go with metallic roughness under a physically based render. Okay. Next we have file. You can select the file that you want to bring in. Okay. You'll see your path right here. Your document resolution. This is how you want to view your model in the scene. You can change this later and I'll get into that. But for now, we're just going to choose 2048. The normal map format, I'm going to be continually using DirectX instead of OpenGL. And then we have a couple different options that I will get into later about auto unwrap UVs. So if you didn't UV it, Substance will auto unwrap it. But that's a discussion for another time. So right now, we are good. Okay. The next thing that I want to talk about is obviously what most people want to do, and that's be able to move in this scene. So like most 3D softwares, this is going to be an alt mouse movement setup. So if you hold the alt button and you hold the left mouse button, you can actually spin around the main object in the scene. If you hold the Alt button and press the middle mouse button, you pan across. So you're basically moving the camera to the left and to the right. If you hold Alt and right click the, the right mouse button, you're able to zoom in and zoom out depending on which way you pull. Also, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in, zoom out. So. Quick recap, alt left mouse button, rotate, alt middle mouse button, pan, alt right mouse button, zoom, scroll wheel, zoom. All right. The next thing is if you're, say you're texturing and you're on this side, we want to see it, but you can see the light is dark. You're getting the shadow of what's happening here. So if you hold shift and you can also see all the, everything that's going to come up here, your little everything you hit alt it'll give you all of your directions on how to move you can hit control it'll give you all your control shortcuts you hit shift and it'll get everything so you hold shift right mouse button and you can rotate the light so you can see better you can see how things are being affected so that covers movement and that covers moving the light okay next we have our our toolbar up here which is edit project settings um, baking maps, uploading a new base model. I'll, I'll go into these a little bit later, but it's not necessary to get started. Viewport, which we'll get into a little bit over with all of these shortcuts to see different maps and different views. But the main point here is I want to sh show entire mesh. So if you do something and you end up at a scene, if you hit the F button, it'll snap right to the center of the mesh. Okay. Same thing as if you go to viewport and hit entire mesh. We're going to skip over Python and JavaScript at the moment, and we're going to shift right over to here so we can see our, our viewport layout. So on this first little button right here, we can see we have a 3D, 2D view with a shortcut of F1, a 3D only, which what we are currently in, and a 2D only. So if I shift to 2D only, we're going to get the UV layout. Okay. So this isn't a complete UV layout because I'm just using this as a test model, but that'll do that. We can shift back here to 3D only, so we can paint on 3D. And if we want a split screen, we can do both. So I can paint here and there, and it interacts between both. Okay, so let's shift back to 3D. 
The next thing is we have perspective versus orthographic view. If perspective gives us the perspective of the human eye, so things will distort as they go in distance, or you can go in orthographic, which will make it completely flat. So you're seeing it from a flat view. You're not getting any distortion. Okay. I usually like to stay in perspective, but orthographic does have its, its, its value as well. Next in here, we have free rotation and constrained rotation. I don't mess around too much with this, but it is how the camera interacts with the object. So I usually leave that as is. Next, we're gonna drop down here to this material view, just so we can see it. You can drop down and you can choose the different channels, base color. We have no base color on right now, height. We have no height, but you can basically shift between all the different channels and see your edits. And if so, you don't have to see everything all at once. You can also hit material. You can hit B as a shortcut to shift through all of these. But for now, we're gonna go through lighting and just see the material color. All right, if we shift over to our panel over here, some of these settings might actually be docked on the right over here. We have our layers, which is a lot like Photoshop. So we'll get into layers in the next video, but this is where your stack will be, where you'll actually painting and editing the mesh over here. We have our texture set, which is going to be the UV, how many texture sets, sets there are, and then how to bake, and we'll get into that in the next video. Uh, then we have our texture set list. If you have different things that are part of different texture sets like this, I can turn on and off these texture sets. If there are one texture set, then it'll only have one, but this allows you to edit each of these maps, okay? If we come over here to the right, we'll see our display settings and you'll see what view we're in. Same thing is right here. We'll get our environmental settings and we'll get our environment map. So this is important because you can change the environment and you can see that it changes the HDRI map or the 360 map in the background. Okay, from here you can actually do this, increase the opacity, and then you can reduce the blur and you can actually see what the map is that is the 3D map that's being um, brought in. And that has light baked into it. So that is actually going to uh, affect how the environment is seen, even if you can't see the background. So you can see this one has a red. If I click this one, it should have more of a purple or blue. There we go. So now this is going to affect how you see your textures. So other options are these black and white, which is neutral lighting or studio lighting. So you can definitely choose studio lighting, which will give you a more accurate representation of your colors that aren't biased to the surrounding environment. Okay. Like we talked about before, you can adjust all of this. The next thing on the way down is shadows. You can turn your shadows on. You want lightweight. I usually keep it at lightweight to view and I don't always have this on because this has a heavy toll on your computer, but sometimes it's nice to see. So I usually drop this down between 50 and 70 to get a nice light shadow so we can see how this thing interacts, okay? Camera settings, one of the big things here is I always like to go to my focal length and shift it up to at least 50. 50 is around what the human eye sees at. So that's gonna adjust the perspective. The lower you go, the more fish-eyed the lens will be. The higher you go, the flatter the object will become. So I usually sit right around 50, okay? Most of these other things I'm not going to get into, like subsurface scattering or anything like that. That's going to be more advanced, but we're going to move along. If you go right under that, you'll see our shader settings. This will allow you to adjust what you chose when you uploaded the file. Do you want to go PBR? Do you want to go non-PBR? Do you want to export for V-Ray? Do you want to use specular instead of metal? Do you want to use... Uh, transparency and what kind of transparency so you can edit after you've imported okay in here we have a lot of settings as well that are more advanced like subsurface scattering uh, parallax anything like this I'm not going to worry about any of this at the moment but it's good to know that you can come in here and change your your material type okay next we click here 
we have our history. So if I were to paint on here, it would add a stroke. If I were to erase, it would go. And that allows you to see all the tracks that you've done. So if I were to do something and then hit Command Z, it would revert back. So uh, Control Z or Command Z on Mac would bring you back um, just like most 3D programs. But you actually can see it and you can actually click between them now, okay? Finally, if you go underneath that, we have our log. Our log is basically going to output any issues, like if you've ever used Maya or any other 3D software. As we come down, we'll see our properties, and the properties will be um, focused on our layers and our brushes and everything else. We'll get into this in our next video, but this is where this is gonna be located. All right, moving along, after our, most of our settings and basics, we're gonna shift over to our, uh, our shelf here, and this is going to be the meat and potatoes of our project. This contains all of the files that are either custom made or made from uh, the Substance Library. So you stuff that you upload, alphas, grunges, procedurals, brushes, which will be very important instead of just having a circular brush like this, we can change it to like that, or we can change it to dots and dirt. This becomes very powerful. Same thing with materials, smart materials. But I will get into all of this on a later video. It's just good to know this is your main point of navigation for interacting with this object. Finally, we're gonna shift up to our action, our actions editor. So within this, we can see that we have a whole bunch of different things and if you hover over them you'll see what they are so this is our paint this is our brush tool okay you can from here you can actually paint on your object okay after painting on the object which you can see right there that's paint you can go to erase which will erase projection which I'll go into a later thing which is basically you take an image you lay it over and then you can paint what's happening on that projection over Okay, polygon fill, I can basically fill polygons. Or if I can edit these and basically fill an entire mesh, and this will be good for other objects like masking later. Okay, uh, let's go to erase and get some free space. Smudge, which will allow us to smudge everything, which is a powerful tool. And then clone, which will basically clone from the square to the circle. So just like ZBrush. And all these other ones are just plug-in tools that'll either take you to a, a place to purchase or link you to Photoshop or link you to something else. So we have all these editors and everything that's going on. The last thing I wanna cover is this top toolbar that is actually going to reference these brushes right here. So if I have the brush selected, I can increase and decrease the size and you can see it editing over here. Another thing you can do is when you're going into this, you can also hold control, right mouse button, drag left and right, and you can see it interacting. You can also edit the flow and the opacity, the spacing, as you can see it edit over there. And that's a lot of stuff that you can actually edit over here as well, the size of the brush. Okay, so these are editable in multiple areas, up here and down here. As we go, you can put on a lazy mouse, which will actually have a slight delay. And you can increase the distance, so it creates larger and smaller if you're using a mouse and not a tablet. So you can draw a nice straight line. We can come over here, and we can actually turn on symmetry. So if I were to delete that layer, Add a new layer, which we'll get into in another one. Don't worry if you're not keeping up right there. This will allow me to edit both sides at the same time. We can also edit the symmetry to mirror X, Y, or Z. We can offset it. We can show what we want. We can show a plane. So these are all editable things that we're going. Okay. So this is going to basically cover the UI navigation. I will get into more detail in the next videos but this is basically <clears throat> what each of these components are and what they do in a very down and dirty sense. Uh, thank you for stopping by and until our next video, I'll see you then.